Welcome to Truck Test 2017. So, it's 4.30 in the morning and I'm at the NJ Blockhouse south of Johannesburg, surrounded by 11 of the country's finest trucks. They're fully loaded with cement and what we're going to do is drive them down the N3 towards Durban. We're going to go down Van Runen's Pass and once we've done that, we're going to turn around and come all the way back again. The question has to be, why? As a transport operator, results like these, we don't always get the opportunity to run such a diverse fleet of vehicles from different manufacturers. So having results like this gives us a good idea of what the competition is all about, what the different manufacturers have got on the market, what their products, how they perform, without having to go and test all of these individual trucks yourself. And I don't think anybody out there has ever considered doing a truck test of this nature, especially with all the manufacturers working together. And I think one of the nice things about truck test is the observers in the vehicles are from other manufacturers, so they be swapped around. So you have an MAN guy taking a drive in a Mercedes-Benz and a Scania guy driving in in a Vico, etc, etc. So that is great for them to see, which is quite interesting. The day before the actual test, we refueled all the vehicles here at Engine Blockhouse and uh, filling them up to an exact spot that was marked off, getting everything ready for an early start on the next morning. The next morning, everybody was on time. We did a short driver's briefing, just made sure everybody knew exactly what the route entails, where to stop, where to have lunch and breakfast. From there, we started in a sequence that was predetermined. The vehicles hit the road, everything ran fairly smoothly. But, of course, there were some last-minute checks before the trucks hit the road, especially with regards to tyre pressures. Now, this is a really interesting contender. It's produced by a company called Sinotruck. Never heard of them, you might say? Well, that's because they've only recently entered the South African market in force. But over in China, they're massive. They're a multi-billion dollar company. Last year alone, they sold 200,000 trucks, which just happens to be 28% up on the previous year. I think you're going to be seeing a lot more of these trucks on our roads in future. While concentration was at an all-time high on the part of the driver and observer, there were some participants who went to extraordinary lengths to keep their fuel consumption to the bare minimum. And then, one by one, the trucks left the engine blockhouse at the crack oh, of dawn. Behind me is something which is actually top secret. It's Hyundai's new truck tractor, which hasn't even been launched in South Africa yet. I first saw it at the Beijing Motor Show when it was being launched in China, and I was quite blown away because it looks quite European, doesn't it? I've seen huge dedication from the participants. They've gone to huge lengths to make sure that everything is ticked off. They've analyzed what they're going to do. So it's a real attention to detail. Have you traveled on the N3 recently? It's chock-a-block full of trucks in case you hadn't noticed. In fact, they constitute a whopping 35% of all traffic on the street. And guess what? Now we're adding another 11. Those 11 trucks came from the seven leading manufacturers of extra heavy commercial vehicles. They were hooked to a Tautliner Interlink or a Trident flat deck. Obviously running on the N3 is the lifeline of South Africa, so a very relevant test, a tough piece of road. The truck test is truly important to us. I think it's the only objective test of heavy commercial vehicles in South Africa today. So for us, well, there is no other option. Of course we're going to attempt. The vehicles that Scania has entered with this year are actually the same vehicle as we entered with 2015, specification-wise. So it's the R500 V8 and it's the 460 13-cylinder engine. Obviously this is a long-haul test, so the vehicles are purely long-haul specifications. Both are 6x4 tractors with the sleeper cabs, which we call the G-cab and the R-cab. Because of the fact that the Focus Truck Test is now, for a number of years, following the same kind of format, it's easier for all OEMs to learn from the uh, former ones that we have done, and by that also actually improve test of the test. So I'm very positive to this format, please stick to it, it's a winner. Great to be part of Truck Test 2017. Why are we here? Uh, we thought that we would enter two products which are typical of that particular route and load configuration. Our flagship TGX 26540, which is our Euro 5 new flagship vehicle with all the bells and whistles in terms of uh, cab technology and safety features, as well as our flagship of our traditional TGS range, the 26480. But those who are more observant would have also noticed a third MAN on the road. 
Aero Truck EPS have combined their uh, forces in terms of putting up an aerodynamic uh, truck trailer combination. So there we have the, the third product that we could have put in from an MAN point of view as well, which is the 440 horsepower TGS, typical fleet truck, in this case with some real aerodynamic enhancements. Aerotruck enter truck test to showcase to the South African transport industry what is available locally. At the front of the truck where you're going to get most of your benefit with aerodynamics is an oversized air kit called our Dolphin. It's a brand new development and we're very proud of it. It's bigger than the generic imported truck air kits. And we're trying to prove to the South African industry that a Dolphin air kit is going to give them better fuel consumption. My father Cameron then decided, well, let's go the full hog and do all the modifications to the trailers as well. We've developed a green tail. The idea is to redirect the air smoothly into the vortex which is created behind the trailer. And hopefully it gives us good results at the end of the test. Of course, not all of the trucks in Truck Test 2017 were extra heavies. Michelin was there to provide much needed support. I am part of the MMTS and it's short for Michelin Mobile Truck Service. We introduced in the Mobile Truck Service to better serve our customers. So we'll be able to actually go on site to better service them. If something does go wrong, this is why we have Alvania to offer services such as balancing, alignment, fitting and stripping. We're here to sort out possible breakdowns during this test. So with this, it's actually an extension of what we're offering in the actual MTSC service centre. So this will be an extension of that in the sense that we'll be able to cover South Africa more comprehensively than what we're doing at the moment. The Michelin Mobile Track Service also offers a, an electronic device that we call the Tire Check Tool. So this is a very useful tool to, to fleet managers because they're able to generate reports. And with these reports comes recommendations. From those recommendations, they're able to actually take immediate action on what to do on a specific tire, whether it be a rotation or replacement of the actual tire. And also it helps them to save money. It's efficient and it's wireless and it's the ultimate tire management tool. For safety reasons, there were scheduled stops so that the drivers and observers could take a well-earned rest before tackling the most challenging part of the route. These mountains can make or break any truck, which is one of the reasons why we selected this route. The gradients are quite frankly just ridiculous. This is also South Africa's most dangerous mountain pass. Welcome to Van Rienens, or if you're a trucker, welcome to hell. As a driver, the best thing is pull off smoothly, don't rush the truck. Once the truck is in motion, try to keep the truck going. You save fuel that way. Main obstacle was going up Van Rillen. There were slow trucks which were moving in front of me. I got caught up with them when I was climbing the hill. I could not overtack on that zone. So it also played a part also. But I cannot complain because some of those things we meet them on a truck test. But the good thing I, I like about the results is it's fair. Each truck went with an observer from the opposite manufacturer. So on, on that aspect, everything I think is fair. The truck has got a ZF gearbox, a 12 speed. The engine does a 13 litre. On most of the applications in South Africa, that's the best truck in our roads. The reason that we have participated in the truck test is just to basically get a benchmark of how our vehicles do on this particular route. I mean, it's always difficult to have a 100% accurate assessment just over one day and relatively short kilometer distance, but nevertheless, there is certainly relevance in, in whatever we get out of it. We are running a bog standard Actros, what we call MP3, the last iteration of the current Actros range. The model is a 2646. That is 460 horsepower, it's a 12 litre V6. We're running a 12 speed direct drive transmission. That would say the top gear, the gearbox is not doing any work. It's just a solid drive right through to the drive axles. 
and basically as it comes straight out of our factory the vehicle is fully equipped really in every sense for a long haul operation. It's an excellent opportunity to be able to see how your trucks stack up against the competition um, in an independent test. We entered the Stralis 480 and the Tracker uh, 440 single reduction. The Stralis 480 is our premium long haul truck. It offers incredible value for money. The driver comfort, the driver safety is really the top in the market. And we also believe that this vehicle performs um, extremely well. This test, um, I think, will prove that as well. I mean, the Tracker single reduction is a very rugged truck with steel suspension. and does very well in cross-border and um, hard emissions like sight -tip. So the procedures have been pretty good. It's been very well planned. I think Martin and the guys have done great, great work in getting this thing set up. I think the participants have been very enthusiastic. We didn't pick up any major problems en route. The weather conditions were actually fantastic. Very little wind. The camaraderie between the guys has been great. Um, so it's really been run well. Everybody has stuck to the rules. There's been no violations. So it's really, really, really worked out well. It was compulsory for the participants to stop at the Heidelberg Way Bridge on both the outward and inward bound legs of the route. This was done to ensure that all the weights were fully compliant. I've been standing at this way bridge now for a couple of hours and, and noticed a huge amount of trucks that are coming in that are being forced to weigh because they're overloaded. But all of them are sitting within the 2%, which tells me that there's no huge gross overloading, but there's a lot of people that are loading their trucks to the absolute loot maximum, which I think is a good thing. They're utilizing the assets, assets correctly. So, so far it's been a great test. I think it's going to be very successful, valuable information, and great participants from, from all the manufacturers. After procedures were completed, the truckers headed back to their original starting point, the engine blockhouse. Two things are really important to transport operators, fuel consumption and the time taken to deliver a load. So that's what we're measuring here today. Heading back uh, from Van Rennes Pass to Engine Blockhouse was a fairly smooth run. Here we filled up all the vehicles again and got the fuel level to the exact spot, uh, checking it off with all the manufacturers to make sure that everything is fairly and accurately measured. We'll get the C-Track information in the next few days to work out the average speeds over all the different legs. We've done our own simulations for the vehicles to determine their fuel consumption and average speeds. And from that we calculate the payload productivity factor, which is worked out by taking the payload in tons, multiplied by the average speed in kilometers per hour, and divided by the average fuel consumption in liters per 100 kilometers. The result of that is a very good measure of the overall performance of the vehicle because it balances the average speed and the fuel consumption very neatly. So there you have it, Truck Test 2017. Done and dusted. The Olympics of the South African transport industry is over. But how did all the contenders fare? Well, all will be revealed on May the 3rd at a special function. Thereafter, the results will also be published on our website, www.focusontransport.co.za.